Hello and welcome back to my channel. You might have noticed, it's been a minute or two since my last video. The reason is really, I haven't had anything stellar to report until now. So a couple of weeks ago, a representative from Creality contacted me about using one of their new printers to work on a printed version of my hand in exchange for some product placement and a listing in my description section. I figured that it would be a good trade and it would upgrade my FFF printing capabilities to the current standard from where I was with my old school MakerBot Replicator 1. So that being said, even though I will most always be rocking one of my aluminum hands, in my free time as I go forward with the design, I'll be trying to adapt it so that it can be printed in TPU, nylon or carbon rather than only being machined out of aluminum. Keep in mind that I still think aluminum is the long term way to go longevity wise. But designing a plastic version would hopefully get it out there. Once I get something put together, I would like it to be open source, but I'm not going to post it to Thingiverse. What I'm thinking for this is if you're serious about working with me on the project, you hit me up, we'll talk about distributing a copy of the files to you, and then as a community, print and test the designs. The model can be updated and then redistributed. I'm not looking to do the free to download thing. If I did that, then there'd be no master file and subsequently no version control. Now I draw an AutoCAD, so all the files are going to be in .dwg. I figure from there, you can scale to fit your residual limb and generate it at STL to work with your printer. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and if there's enough real interest in there, we can see where it goes. So the printer that Creality sent me is a Sermoon D1. I only received it a couple days ago, and the UPS Gorilla kind of got a hold of the box pretty good. But from what I've seen, it looks like it was super well packed and survived the trip. We'll see when I actually go and assemble it. If you'd like to see a build video, let me know. There's already a pile of them out there, but if you want, I can do a speed run putting it together. As far as progress on my new hand, lately all I've been doing is playing whack-a-mole with the issues that pop up during real-world testing. The current set of issues that I'm working on centers around the socket. What I've been finding is that as I'm using the device and my hand sweats, the liner gets slippery, and even though the socket fits super tight on my residual limb, it feels like my hand is sliding all over the place. So when I try to pick something up, I lose all the sense of positioning that I'm used to with the wire socket in my current hand. Another thing that I've been working on for quite a long time is being able to control the individual fingers. Since the beginning, I had accepted that I was probably going to have to do it electronically. Now the problem with that is really everything. Electronics run out of batteries, don't like water, dirt, oil, really anything outside world. And as I'm bending the wires by opening and closing the fingers, I'm actually work hardening the wires so that eventually they'll break. Of course, always in the most inopportune time. Recently, I took my dad on a road trip, and while driving, I came up with an idea how I might be able to mechanically index the fingers using the over-travel of display motion. I went and I drew it up in AutoCAD and unsuccessfully printed one on my resin printer. The copy was good enough that it gives me a reference that I'll eventually be able to machine. So while I'm busy being frustrated trying to figure out how to fix the issues with my new hand, I thought I'd take a break from that project and work on something else for a bit. Before cancer and losing my fingers, I really enjoyed target archery. I was pretty good at it, and really, it's a pretty cheap hobby, as long as you don't break or lose the arrows. So the problem is, I don't have fingers to hold on to the bow. So in order to shoot my bow again, I'm going to need to come up with a new way of holding on to my bow. The bow I'll be using is a mid-2000s Oneida Tomcat with a 4-inch overdraw. Let me show you some of the features. It's a broken limb design with a single 14-strand Dacron string and a pair of wire ropes that run through the riser. A neat feature of the bow is you can draw the bow to any point and release it without damaging the limbs. Another cool feature is when you do eventually break a string, you don't need a fancy bow press in order to replace it. So all you need to do is wrap a piece of rope around the curved limbs, cock the bow, and then hook the loops on the ends of the limbs like you would an old school recurve. So that's the bow. My plan is to build a bracket that lets me mount an unlined fiberglass socket to the riser. Fortunately, there are a couple mounting points on the riser that I'll be able to use. Of course, it'd be best if I had three points to mount the bracket, but unfortunately, I only have two. One is where the stabilizer threads into the riser, and the other one is where the overdraw mounts. Hopefully, being that the two holes are off axis, it'll offer enough rigidity that I don't need to drill and tap a third hole into the riser. I'm going to start out by laying out the bracket in cardboard cap. Then once I have something I like, I'll transfer it over to grid paper, then AutoCAD, where I'll draw it up so I can cut it out on the plasma cutter. Then form it up in the press brake, and maybe weld on a couple of gussets. 
So let's get started with a Sharpie and a piece of cardboard and see where it goes from there. So I realize nobody likes your time lapses. So I went and sped everything up by about 800% on this. The total time to actually fabricate the bracket was about an hour and a half. So first thing I do is I start out by preforming the cardboard and establishing two anchor points with the bow so that I can have fixed reference to where I can take the, the cardboard on and off. The next thing I do is cut it to a rough shape so I can get kind of an approximation. Then I go in and put it back on the bow and just kind of sketch out what I'm thinking it's going to look like with the form. So then I go and I, I cut it out with the scissors to get, you know, again, just a rough approximation form. You know, it's all going to be put onto grid paper and then into CAD later. The tabs and flaps that I'm going to use for the actual anchor plate or the anchor mounts for the socket. I go and I test fit it onto the bow, see how the angle is, see if I'm happy with it. A little bit more refinement, go and figure out the angle and profile of where the socket fits into it. Make sure everything's good, figure out that I can add like an inch and about an inch and an eighth more to that, to that profile. Next I go to a piece of grid paper and just kind of rough it out. You know, I align the long axis with the, uh, with the grid. I do a little offset um, to where things are really going to be. Then I just do straight lines. Whenever you're converting something onto grid paper, it's really best to, rather than going and cutting all your radiuses and make it pretty, it's better to just do straight intersecting lines. That way with CAD you can have real hard points. I'm doing basic triangulation. So then you start out with just a regular height, an offset, and then everything is just drawn by circles. And then you just connect wherever they intersect. So then this top piece is offset by 3 8 of an inch off the straight uh, where it intersects. And now it kind of can just builds itself. So in order for the plasma cutter to cut out circles, you draw your circle, you break out a segment, and then you do a lead in, lead out, and then polyline, edit, join. So you're connecting your lead in, lead out to the circle, and then the machine connects, you realize that it's that it's cutting a circle instead of just a point. Now I'm just doing tangent arc construction wherever the set of arcs join. Pretty easy there. So now I'm just kind of finishing it up, trimming it, removing all the excess lines, establishing a couple of radiuses for the profile. Next I'm uh, removing all the inside lines and then I'm going to go and figure out what my offsets are so I can take off a little bit of weight. So on this I'm, I'm cutting out two windows on it uh, just because that material really isn't necessary. Now on the top flap all that needs to be all that needs to remain solid because that's where I'm actually going to be mounting the socket. So lead in, lead out, open up a segment, uh, polyline edit, yes join, uh, next, I align it to an XY uh, zero, go and set it up on a machine origin, and that's about it for the drawing. Export it as a DXF, and then off to the plasma cutter. Next, I go to the press brake, throw in a couple bends. Um, since it's so tight into that corner, I have to go uh, straighten things out on the table with a hammer. That's about where I'm at. So, uh, those all line up pretty good. So, hope you enjoy. Okay, so that's where we're probably going to end this video today. Uh, bracket looks pretty good. Probably end up having to put a little piece of flat bar strip right here. Just to go ahead and stiffen it to keep it from from bending like this when I'm holding on to it. Um, but, as you can see, it looks like it's, uh, it looks like it's going to mount up pretty good. And then my handle just go right there. Let me just put a socket on real quick, see what it really looks like. So, like that, like that.
close that gap up when I go and weld it together. Ought to be pretty good. We'll pick it up on the next video. Thanks for watching.